So grateful to have you with us. I'm hoping that you're about to enjoy these next few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Lock in. Maybe call a friend. Tell them you need to be watching. Why? Because we're about to open up the Word of God. And whenever the Word of God is opened up, the potential for tomorrow to change is always much greater than today. The Word of God can show you a tomorrow so amazing that it'll make you walk out of the doldrums and the hurts of yesterday. I want you to take this journey with me every time we're here. Would you go now? God bless you. I'll see you in just a minute. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. There's the context here, but I want to extract the key, the principle, out of the context. For as a man thinketh in his heart, <coughs> that means not a fleeting thought, but a belief. As a man believes, as his belief system is, so is the man. Let me give my, my little verb breakdown. You have action verbs, you have state of being verbs. And in this phrase, there are both. For as a man thinketh, the action verb is think. The state of being verb is is. This is the only time the word of God says that there's one action that will determine your is. Whew. As a man thinketh, so becomes his reality. <clears throat> Why are people rich? Not because they got lucky, because they think rich. When I was very, very poor, I thought poor. When I began to prosper, it's because I thought prosper. <laughs> Ah, come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Don't let me lose you. Why do we, why do we think fear? Why, do we, why are we in fear? Because we think fear. Why are we in peace? It's because we think peace. Why are we in depression? It's because we think depression. Why are we in joy? Because we think joy. Why are people thankful? It's because they think thankful thoughts. So wherever your mind goes, your life will begin to follow your mind. So the greatest thing you could do today if you say that I'm stuck and I want to bring movement back to my life, it's not coming really to an altar and saying, God, do something in my life. It's you beginning to get the Word of God and let the Word of God paint pictures across the canvas of your faith. And then when you begin to think the way the Word thinks, and then you begin to speak the way the Word speaks, the Bible says we believe, therefore we speak speak. We believe, therefore we speak. Hey, we believe, therefore we speak. When you can begin to believe like God believes and then you begin to speak like God speaks, then your ears as a man thinketh, so he is. So your ears is going to begin changing. How many of you are ready to change your ears? Uh, look at your neighbor say, I'm ready to change my ears. I'm ready to change my ears. If you're going to change your ears, you got to go back here and change your think. Somebody in this building right now, I'm just just praying that God shake things loose in your mind and that he begin to expand the borders of your mind, lengthen the cords of your mind, enlarge the tent of your thinking because your life can be as big as your think can. Oh. And then when you have thought the biggest thoughts you could ever imagine thinking, the Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond, beyond all that you could ask or think. So think as big as you can and ask as big as you can and then know you haven't even begun to test the surface of God's almighty power. Somebody give God five seconds of praise in this place. Hey! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, do something big, God. Do something big in my mind. Lord, let me think larger in my mind. Kick me out of these small places in my mind. Create movement in my mind. Shout hallelujah. 
I got to keep preaching. I got to keep preaching. I got to keep preaching. <laughs> As a man thinketh in his heart, so is the man. Matthew 22, <laughs> verses 34 and 35. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, <clears throat> asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. Let me stop there. Let me stop there. Verse 30. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your mind is your mind. Why did God say, love the Lord God with all of your mind twice? Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your mind. <clears throat> Help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Your mind has two basic functions. Your mind remembers <clears throat> and it imagines. Go study all the neuroscience you want to, but it boils down to this. When you get through with, when you get through with neurons and electrons and everything else, when you get through with a neurosystem in your body, a nervous system in your body, your mind remembers and your mind imagines. Your remembrance would be about the size of a closet. Your imagination is the size of a universe. Yet most people live out of what they remember, good God, and not out of what they imagine. I'm going to tell you something. I feel the weight of this. This, I have never preached this message anytime, anywhere where I did not feel the weight of change coming through the room. And I feel it right now, even as I'm speaking this message, even as I'm speaking it, your mind remembers and your mind imagines. Now do you see the idiocy, the ridiculousness of us holding on to our past without imagining a future? See, <clears throat> imagination causes pursuit. If you don't imagine anything, you don't pursue it. I came into a church world that was sharply divided between the 80s and 90s, where if there was diversity, I had not seen any of it. Not really anywhere across America, but especially in the Southeast where Hope and I began. And I imagined a church that looked like heaven. I imagine kingdom diversity dwelling in a body of believers. And of course, you got your naysayers and, you know, you're going to get kicked in the teeth. You're going to get ground to powder. And don't take me wrong, that vision has had a price tag. But the fact is, I imagined it. I didn't come into ministry remembering everything that I had experienced and thinking that that's all God was. I imagined a God that could do more. I imagined a God that could do bigger. I imagined a God that could draw thousands. I imagined a God that could go across the globe. I imagined a God that could translate the message into people's native tongue. I imagined, I imagined a place of praise that would bring the roof off the building. I imagined a place of power. All those things I imagined. And I'm going to tell you, I just tend to be a little biased, but redemption became all those things. It is all those things. We'll continue to be all those things. It's a powerful people, a people of praise, a people bonded together through love and the Holy Spirit, a people that do not let all the culture wars get in their kingdom culture. Come on, somebody. A people that has learned how to love each other in spite of weaknesses and in spite of faults. A people that know how to praise the roof off the building and worship till Jesus walks down the aisles. A people that know how to walk in deliverance and miracles. A people that are hungry for the 
the word. And when you've given them all the words you can give them, they're still on their feet wanting more word. I envisioned it. And when I began to think it in my mind, all of a sudden my life began to move in that direction. And now you begin to think it in your mind. And now here we are because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can't live out of the closet of your memory. You've got to open up your imagination and let God cause you to imagine something so great that it'll cause you to walk out of all the doldrums of your past. Some of you can't get out of your past because you've never seen what God can do. Loose your imagination to see all the possibilities of God and let God give you something that you want to run toward and pursue and the past will begin to lose its hold on you. I feel something happening in this building right now. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to stand up and just do like this right here and let the enemy know I'm shaking this past off. I'm coming out of this closet of my memory and I am going to believe a God that can do exceedingly abundantly. I'm going to give you five more seconds to praise the Lord your God. Somebody help me in this place. I feel like running all over this building. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus said, I'm going, but I'm sending you a helper. I'm sending you a comforter. And when he comes, he will convict in regards to righteousness. Come on. He's one that convicts. He's one that gives gifts. He's one that guides us into the truth. The Holy Spirit is the only one that knows about my life. Throwback, a 2022 summer series. From when you're stuck to my world, Ron Carpenter looks back at some of his most popular all-time messages with a current perspective. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that you could ask or think. So think as big as you can and ask as big as you can. And then know you haven't even begun to test the surface of God's almighty power. This series is available for your gift of $30 or more. Call now and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Hey, again, you know what? We're going to get back to that great word in just a minute. I hope you're enjoying it, but I always stop right in the middle to offer just a word of thanks. Uh, I want to tell each and every one who's just viewing right now, thank you. Uh, you certainly in the day of what, 1,100 cable channels and a phone that attaches to the internet in your hand, you have options. And the fact that you're here watching right now, I'm so grateful and I don't take it for granted. Number two, to thank those people who have supported and allowed us to be on here. We are viewer supported, listener supported. We didn't show any commercials. We didn't sell any ads. You didn't have to watch anything come out and you didn't see Coca-Cola or Barai. You didn't see it. We didn't do anything because we believe in God's people that when they know the message is being preached, that that cause is the greatest cause in the world and they want it to go as far as it can and reach as many people as it can. And that's what we here at Ron Carpenter Ministries are endeavoring to do. You've been with us on a long journey, many of you since 98, some of you for a few weeks, but maybe you've been blessed and you've never given. Would you consider making this program do what it does? Whether it's a one-time gift or you want to become a monthly partner, this is the gift we'll send you to say thank you for partnering with us. We hope that this partnership is a blessing, and I hope that every time you turn on this TV and you see this program, I hope that it impacts your life in a positive way. Now, let's get back to the Word. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh. The Bible says, forgetting those things which are behind. <laughs> the word forget does not mean selective amnesia. The word forget means to willfully unnotice. Forgetting those things which are behind, that's one part of my mind, I press on toward the mark. What is the mark? What I imagine. You can't, you can't touch it. You can't touch the mark but you see it inside of yourself and you pursue it. 
Mark chapter 5, throw that up there. <clears throat> now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. <clears throat> when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. Let me show you this memory and imagination. Memory and imagination. You need to forget. That means to willfully unnotice. That means you're looking, 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 and there that thing is, and you go, and look right on past it. I willfully and intentionally choose to unnotice it so it has no power in my life. So forgetting the heartache, forgetting the betrayals, forgetting the knife in the back, forgetting the people that walked away, forgetting the bankruptcies, forgetting your last defeat or your last failure, you get to that point in your lifeline and you look over it, you willfully unnoticed. I press. So I've got to unnotice the things that would like to hold me at bay before I can press to the mark of the high, for the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Stay with me. <laughs> the woman with the issue of blood, I forget what book it is. This, I think this account's in two different books. The other account says, and she said within herself. Oh. So Jesus came by, look at this. And she said within herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She didn't look, well, I went to this doctor, I went to this doctor, I went to this physician, I went to this physician, I've spent this money, I have no more resources, so I don't see why this Jesus thing would work. She didn't go there. She willfully <laughs> unnoticed everything up to that point and imagined just being able to touch his clothes. And if I can touch his clothes, I shall be made healed. So you've got to think it to create movement. So what she imagined gave her the power to pursue. Because when you lose blood, you get weak. So I can imagine her constant loss of blood had weakened her. But when she saw something in herself and when she thought that thought, it gave her the power to press through the crowd and reach out and lunge and touch the hem of his garment. Some of you have no motivation. Some of you have no desire to pursue. It's because you don't think or see anything. And when you begin to think a great thing, and when you begin to feel and see a great thing, all of a sudden you get the power to chase the thing. The power to pursue comes after you give your mind the ability to imagine. <laughs> oh, God said, call on me. And I'll show you great and mighty things which you know not. God said, I'll put in your mind things that are so far above you that you had no idea that I could do. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you got David. He's right there with Goliath. <laughs> Look how he uses both parts of his mind. Here's the things you do need to remember, the victories, the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, the breakthroughs. <clears throat> He's faced with Goliath, his by far most daunting task yet, and he's walking toward him. In his mind, I remember I killed a lion, and I remember I killed a bear, and then he moves from memory to imagination. And the Lord God, I come at you in the name of the Lord God of hosts who has this day given you into my hands. He, he's saying that before he ever releases the stone. Why is he saying it? Because it's what he's thinking. So what does David do? God gives the giant into his hands. <coughs> Because as David thinks, it became. As the woman with the issue thought, it became. You want to move your is? 
you have to move your thoughts. Can I go just a little bit deeper? Give me about nine or 10 minutes. Your mind is a minimizer or a maximizer. Your mind is a minimizer or a maximizer. Your mind is a magnifying glass. Your mind can make it as small as you want it to be. Your mind can blow it up and make it as big as you want it to be. It's called focus. The law of focus. You tend to move in the direction of what your mind focuses on. People who focus on everything that's gone wrong and everyone that's hurt them, when your mind begins to move in that direction, <coughs> depression is on the way. Anger, bitterness, resentment will be your is. But people likewise who've been through many difficult things they think about how God brought them out. They thought about how God restored them. They thought about how God made a way when there was no way. They thought about how God opened the door when all the doors were shut. And what happens? Their life begins to move into the joy of their salvation and to the goodness of God. Because your mind is a minimizer or a maximizer. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to start taking your mind and minimizing your challenges. Because Zerubbabel said, what, uh, uh, Ezra said, what are you, almighty mountain? before Zerubbabel, you shall become a level plain. In other words, <laughs> you look at yourself as being huge and insurmountable, but I don't. I see you as something I can step right over. So you got to determine what am I going to minimize? What am I going to maximize? Hallelujah. When you see a person, Jacob was a trick. God named his name Israel. He's a prince. Or when you get to somebody, are you going to focus on the trick part? Or are you going to focus on the prince part? Jesus went to Mary Martha's house and Mary worshiped and he said, you have chosen the greater portion. Martha tend to focus on the man, and, G and Mary tend to focus on him, the Son of God. Hallelujah. You got to decide what you're going to minimize and what you're going to maximize. He went through many towns, and people maximized him as the Son of God, and he did many miracles. He went to his hometown, and they minimized him and said, he's not the Son of God. This is Joseph's boy, and he could do no miracles there. What are you going to minimize? What are you going to maximize? The power is within you to do that. Listen, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. As we enter into the house of the Lord, we sing praises, praises to our God. When you magnify God, you're not making him bigger than he is, but you're making him bigger to you. The power to do that is in your mind. Shout hallelujah. I can't hardly stand it. Excuse me, guys. I got a tickle in my throat. <sighs> Your mind is where you give definition. How do you define it? Oh, it was just the worst days of my life. I've never been the same. Well, who defined it that way? Can I tell you something? The worst day of my life became my biggest opportunity. How do you define it? <laughs> Things didn't go the way I wanted them to in Redemption East. And so I came back and said, all right, how am I going to define this? I'm going to define it as a chance to come back as a more mature adult and correct my mistakes. How do you define it? God tell you, I'm also. <coughs> I have an older son that's very adventurous, and he was always the kind of kid that was down for anything. I've got another son who saw all the trouble he got in and wanted nothing to do with it, and he's extremely cautious. One was to the extreme one way, one was to the extreme other way. And you take them up to a theme park and they both see a roller coaster with the loops. And I've got my oldest son who looks at it grinning, his heart's beating and he can't wait to get on it, trying to break in line. 
and I got my second son trying to get let go of my hand and go back out there and stand where mama is. Same roller coaster, two definitions. One views it as fun, one views it as horrifying. One is filled with excitement, one is filled with terror. Same roller coaster, two definitions. Well, since my divorce, you know, I just never really recup. How do you define it? No, other people don't get to define it. You get to define it. Well, you know, after we went bankrupt and we lost our business, how do you define it? Because let me tell you what, I've noticed that sometimes God takes your worst things and creates the greatest setup. Because man's problems become God's opportunities. But you're going to have to take the tragedies in your life and you're going to have to figure out how do you define it. Before we go, I just want to ask you, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior? It's not about church. It's not about a code of conduct. It's not about a religion. It's not even about a belief system. It's about a person, a person who came as the Son of God to pay a horrible price to purchase our salvation, who wants to live on the inside of you, live on the inside of me, be our personal Lord and Savior, and be there every time you call on His name and you never have another day alone and never fight another battle alone. That's the Jesus I offer you. What does it cost me, Pastor? It's free. It's the gift of grace. If you would like to know Him, the prayer goes something like this, Lord Jesus, I believe you died and rose again for my salvation. I ask you to come into my heart and into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to wash me of my sins. I'm sorry, I ask your forgiveness. I accept your gift of salvation and thank you from this moment forward that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. It just happened and I got a big smile on my face because I know the journey that just started for you, amen. Please write in, let us know. Please call in, let us know. Write a letter, let us know. Email us, let us know, but we don't want you to make this decision alone. Please tell us. Ah, oh, we're so excited for you. Until next time, God bless. Jesus said, I'm going, but I'm sending you a helper. I'm sending you a comforter. And when he comes, he will convict in regards to righteousness. Come on. He's one that convicts. He's one that gives gifts. He's one that guides us into the truth. The Holy Spirit is the only one that knows about my life. Throwback, a 2022 summer series. From when you're stuck to mind world, Ron Carpenter looks back at some of his most popular all-time messages with a current perspective. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that you could ask or think. So think as big as you can and ask as big as you can and then know you haven't even begun to test the surface of God's almighty power. This series is available for your gift of $30 or more. Call now and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.